welcome to another up close video. Today's one is for Tonic Showcase number 15, which is called the Enchanted Cottage. I and mean, it does actually make a three dimensional gift box, but obviously you can use all the bits and pieces to create some cards as well. So my sped up video that should be up around tomorrow kind of time um, will have four cards in it showing you how you can use um, the bits and pieces to make a couple of kind of new home cards and a couple just focusing on the gorgeous butterflies that are in here as well and then I've also got one sample of a, a cottage already made up that kind of looks more more like a house really than a, a cottage and then I have got um, all of the bits ready to show you how to assemble it as well. It is really easy to assemble and create this gorgeous cottage. I think the hardest thing is deciding do you go with the dies, do you go with the stamps, do you mix and match them and deciding on a colour scheme, I reckon that's probably the hardest part of this um, box. So, let's get on to looking at the die set first. Um, obviously you can see that some of these stamps coordinate with the die set, which is really nice actually. It's a new kind of concept that Tonic are coming out with, um, where you have stamps that coordinate with um, a gift box, so that instead of having to die cut all the panels for the sides, for those of us who love colouring, we can actually stamp panels onto the sides of our boxes, whether we stamp them directly on, or whether we use the dies to cut them out and then mount them onto the box. Box. Um, it just gives like an extra um, different option for decorating them, it makes it kind of go further really rather than just having to stick to the die cut designs um, that are in the sort of main die set as well. So let's have a look at the die set first. Because this is a showcase you will get it in the A5 sleeves and um, you get a magnetic sheet for the die set as well. And I have actually got the packaging for the die set. Um, so you can see that is what the little houses look like and you do also have an extra piece that goes on the top I haven't used it on either of mine um, so that you could actually hang them and I love the closure mechanism on this it's really clever um, I was kind of like hmm I wonder how this is actually going to work to close but it's a really clever closure mechanism it actually has four flaps that close down on all of the different sides of the roof um, and it's really brilliant kind of design and the fact that you've got the little hanging piece so that you could make them into um, like little Christmas houses to go on a Christmas tree or you could turn them into um, an ornament to give somebody for a new home for moving house or something as well and I love that you can personalise them so you can change the door colour to be their door colour um, you could add um, li the little brick detail if they have um, you know just brick on their house or if they have the rendering you could you know use maybe um, stone drops or something to make that kind of texture of rendering um, even if they had like a pebble dashed house, um, you could kind of simulate that sort of thing as well, maybe by using stone drops and then sprinkling in microbeads or confetti or something like that to kind of give that sort of a look as well. And you can also change the effect of um, the pattern on the roof as well. You can go for more of like a realistic roof with these kind of roof tiles. You've also got a stamped option for roof tiles and there's also more of like a florally element for the roof tiles as well. Um, so it's a really nice versatile kind of set that you can really personalised to somebody's home and actually if, if they um, lived in like um, a thatched roofed cottage you could even you know get some sort of little bits of um, raffia or um, natural thready twiny stuff perhaps and actually stick bits on to make it look more like a thatched roof as well if you wanted to so I think these are a really cool versatile kind of little house that you can change or cottage so, with the die set, it's an A5 die set and it really is packed full of dies on here and you have this piece which is the main house piece and you need two of these to create your actual box and you can get both of them out of an A4 sheet so just to do, especially if you were just going to stamp on it um, literally one A4 piece of cardstock you could get um, a completed house out of it if you just use all of the stamps to add your decoration to it um, which is, you know, great uh, cost saving, card saving, if you were going to sell them on a stall or maybe make an advent calendar with them and have a different house for each um, day of uh, December counting down to Christmas. Um, you Knowing that each one's only going to take one piece of card, um, it saves quite a lot of time. You could even actually get um, the kids to colour them in, so you could stamp them all ready, because if you use your stamping platform, you can, um, if you butt the, it's got an actual sort of right angled sort of edge to it, you can actually butt it up in your stamping platform and... Um, 
stamp them you know multiples at a time you would have to then go back and stamp them all again with the other sections of roof because if you were going to use for example this well this is the only stamped roof but um, if you're going to use this you obviously need two for each die cut two lots of um, all three of them for each die cut so you could pick two different sides of the stamps for the house and then stamp half the roof in one go go through all of them and then come back and put the other three portions of the roof in the opposite place and um, you know get them all done and ready so I think that would be a really cool project actually so that is the main sort of uh, die to create your little house or cottage then you also need this piece which is the base of the house or cottage as well so the actual base of the box will be um, two inches square and then the height of the main portion of the inside of the box because of the way the sides come in you kind of lose some of the space at the top but the height of the main portion is two and a quarter inches so the main section of box will be two by two and a quarter inches um, size wise but you would have a little bit of space extending into the top of the box as well so I think you could fit a decent amount of um, treats in here like little you know individually wrapped um, sweets or chocolates as well or um, even craft supplies if you knew um, you know like a crafty friend and maybe you saved some of the little miniatures out of the kits and stuff because you've already got the larger versions um, you could put things like that in these I think they might actually fit a nouveau drop in so if you were doing like a crafty advent calendar for a friend you could give them like a different nouveau drop every day um, of advent which would be a really cool idea so you could do that kind of thing as well maybe even a sparkle spray would fit in there actually yeah, so I think there's uh, lots of different ways or things that you could put in here. Maybe even a miniature bottle of alcohol might fit actually too. Maybe you know somebody loves a, a specific brand of an alcohol and if you got all of the little miniatures you could put one in each day and that would be quite a, a different kind of idea. Or maybe like miniature cordials or something or I don't know. There's loads of different ideas that you could do for turning this into an advent calendar or even just a gift on a tree with one miniature in. would be quite a cool idea. So, um, the rest of the pieces are majority decoration. You've also got a tag on here as well. And you do have one sentiment that is one of the debossing sentiments. It's so adorable. It says, home sweet home. And I did actually trace around it with a pen. I used the finest pen that I could find. I think it's like a 0.2. Um, and it works perfectly to fill in the little detail on there. I will show you that later on as well. So, rest of the decoration, you have options of straight sides so you've got all of the ones have a straight side and then you also have all of the options with a scalloped side as well so depending if you're going for be more of a realistic kind of look you can go with the straight sides and if you're going for maybe more of a feminine florally kind of look because you've got these gorgeous floral panels the scalloped side might look quite nice on that as well um so you do have both of the options and you have all of the pieces in each design so you don't have to sort of mix and match and then some areas might look funny because they've got a scallop piece and not a straight piece or something you do actually have all of them so you have the main side for the house you have um this triangular portion which has a notch out of it because that's how um the die set kind of goes together this portion creates the locking mechanism this piece actually folds down and slots into here it's really clever and I will show you that um, but that's how that sort of mechanism works and then you also have the piece the weird shaped piece that decorates this top piece as well and you have that in both designs and then you also have just the straight um, triangle as well which fits on these pieces and you have the scalloped one too and then for the decoration on these little roof pieces you have this little one for all three of the designs that has um well it kind of looks like a mermaid's tail but it's kind of that idea of um you know like on a gingerbread house they usually have the shingles that are sort of um scallopy designs like that that overlap and are offset from each other it's that sort of design and then the other um three as well they're kind of floral if you look on the back of oh no not this packaging where did i put it up here um, if you look on the back of this packaging, um, whoever's done this sample has paper pieced in the little flowers. So that's kind of like um, a floral design to go on the roof as well. So you've got um, three different options. Well, kind of four different options, actually, because you could just leave it plain or cut a solid panel as well. So there yeah, loads of different um, 
sort of styles to turn it into really and then the main panels for the side of the house um you have this gorgeous one i love this one this brick design and it stencils really brilliantly i was cutting it out and stenciling through it and it works really fantastically for that as well you have this gorgeous one with lovely large um florals gorgeous swirls in there if you had that um i think it was a craft kit it was quite a while ago now maybe over a year now and it was all kind of like fairy themed and I'm sure you had some silhouette fairy dies and there was also a stamp club as well that I'm remembering that was fairy themed and there was little stamps of fairies and um, those kind of things would go really nicely with this having a fairy flying past on the house uh, especially with this sort of floral design I think it, it lends itself nicely to kind of fairies and then to go with this kind of florally sort of design and to go with those roof panels actually you also have um, this piece here which cuts out the door in there as well and it's actually um I don't know if this die is a little bit confusing as to what it cuts away, but I wasn't expecting it to cut away the bit that it did cut away. So when I cut them both together, like this, um, you are actually left with the skinny edge going all the way around here and then the details cut in the middle, but you're also left with the door because this piece falls away. So around these flowers and down these archways, that piece falls away and you're left with this arch of the door. And the reason why they've done that is this arch of the door will fit the door stamp onto it. So if you wanted to stamp your door, you have the place there on your decorative panel already to stamp the door onto, or you do also have a door die as well. This die is too small to cut out the actual door, um, so that's why you kind of have that extra piece in there. The larger piece behind fits the stamp on, and then you can also add the um, die cut door if you'd rather. If you were keeping it all in a die cutting theme, you've got the little door and you've got the detail to go in it as well, which has got the little um, apertures for like a window at the top of the door, the sort of panelling at the bottom. Um, it embosses a letterbox and it's also got a little door knocker right in the middle as well. So um, nice little detail details within that little door die. Then on to more of the sort of decoration pieces, we have different options for windows and there's also a different window in the stamp set as well, but this gorgeous little circular window has little shutters on it and if you cut two of them, if you're using like a luxury card, cut two of them and then snip the shutters off and stick them to the reverse side so that then you can actually make them open and close and they'll look pretty on both sides. And you also have the little window piece to go inside as well to give you the little panes of glass in your window. So tiny little sort of four quadrants for the window. But you also have a separate circle. Now you can't put the circle inside there and cut them together and you can't cut them together. It's kind of an extra. You can cut the circle and then cut this into it. However, the outside edge is then thinner than the crossbar on the window, but you might want that effect to layer up onto this round window. Or you can use this circle to cut a colour of card or white card and then colour it to go behind the window to show like the lights on or something. So you've got um, nice little options in that for cutting out that little window. Then the other window is this gorgeous little arched window here. Um, and if you want to cut a backing for this, you can literally just use the outside of that to cut the backing. You could also layer this on top of the door if you wanted to. Um, the actual pieces of the window I think they would do that kind of double layering effect on the ones that cut out on the actual door. I don't know if you can really tell that on the camera. No, you can't really tell. Um, but you could layer that on top of the door if you wanted to. It would. It is practic. You know, it is the same size as the top of the door. So if you did want, um, I don't know, bigger or if you, yeah, if you just wanted bigger windows in your door, you could actually just use that interior portion of um, the little window die to actually make those apertures bigger on the door as well for a different look. And then you could actually use this piece to back behind it again to show like light coming through too. So that's another option of um, altering the door die as well. Then we also have this or these two gorgeous dies. I love these. They are tiny little ivy and I'm, there's been quite a few ivies over the years on um, different tonic die sets. The first one I remember having um, a gorgeous sprig of ivy in it was the triangular base um, or side pieces for the kaleidoscope boxes. That was like possibly three years ago now. Um, but there was a gorgeous um, ivy in that and I think they've 
it, I'm sure it came back recently in another die set. They had some other ivy. I can't think whether it was an online one or a Crate and Craft one, but I'm sure there's been some other ivy again recently. And I'm, I'm pretty sure they're all in different scales. So this one is a lovely, um, fine, sort of detailed one. So it goes perfectly with the scale of the house. But I also think this would look beautiful on some Christmas cards as well. You could even, like... Um, you know, cut four of them and make a square ivy frame for like, I don't know, focusing in on the sentiment, having a little character popping out of it or something on a Christmas card. I think that would look lovely. You do also get a little flower die that can go um, with the kind of ivy design as well. So gorgeous little five pointed flowers with the little indents on the sides. Really pretty that one. You also get a piece of grass as well, which is the perfect width to add onto the bottom of the panels of your um, die cutting pieces. And it looks really lovely having um, that little area of grass along the bottom. And if you're having the grass, you could also add the flowers coming out of the grass and maybe cutting thin strips of cardstock or drawing it on with a pen and adding the flowers coming out of the grass to sort of decorate the bottom portion of the side of the house or something as well. Then, this is the little hanging piece here, um, it actually has a debossing heart inside it as well. Oh, and that's something I didn't mention about the main base die set. I don't, I don't know what, oh no, you can see it on the finished box actually, but that central section there, that's a heart. And the two side pieces make the heart as well, and you can actually see that on the side of the finished box, it has a little heart in there. So it looks really cute actually. Um, but yeah, you actually get that as part of that die as well. And you can use that little tiny heart that falls out. But this is the hanging portion. And you would cut two of these and stick them um, stick them together around this whole portion. And then these two little flappy pieces at the bottom with the debossed heart in them, you would uh, splay them out and stick them either side of one of the roof pieces. And that's how you get it to hang nicely. Um, let's go with this one. This is that little home sweet home. It's upside down, but you can see how tiny this is. It's so much finer debossing than some of the other ones we've had um, in die sets recently, but it's really adorable, and you can actually trace over it, and it still looks really nice. So this was one that I had done. I think it still looks lovely tracing over it, and it really um, makes it stand out then. It kind of looks like um, maybe an old wooden sign that someone's used pyrography to sort of... Um, add the words in it that you might get on like an old cottage or something with an actual name of the the cottage um, so I thought that was really cool tracing over that then we also have this section here I didn't actually use any of these but it's a gift tag and the hole for the gift tag is a heart so you could use that heart to decorate anywhere that you want to you get the oval that layers on top and then you get the word in there which says cherish and there's also like little sort of swirly branches coming in on that as well so a gorgeous little gift tag and then there's, well, five more dies left. Some of my favourites are actually butterflies. So you have this butterfly here, which kind of looks a little bit blobby, but it cuts out the butterfly stamp perfectly. You also have this butterfly here, which is a small butterfly again, but you can actually use, cut them both individually, but you can actually use them together so that this little butterfly would have um, a solid mat behind it and there would be a tiny little... Um, border around the edge you can see it's probably a millimeter kind of border all the way around the edge of that but also that outline one does cut out the stamp as well so it's kind of dual purpose and then you have this gorgeous butterfly here and that large butterfly cuts out the butterfly stamp that I'll show you in a second and then you also have the detail of the wings as well so you could cut this from a solid and then cut um, a solid one with the detail in it and layer them up together um, or you can just use this one to cut the stamp out or you can just have a detailed butterfly as well you could even paper piece some of these pieces back in those larger drops would look lovely sort of paper pieced back in so I think this is a really lovely um, die set this one to create this little cottage enchanted cottage um, and we've also got the stamps to go with it as well which I think just makes it even more versatile so for the stamp set you have three different sides that you can pick you could use this one which kind of looks Oh, it is, it's wood grain, isn't it? I wasn't sure what it w was supposed to be to begin with, but it is actually planks going across, and there's like a wood grain sort of design in it. It looks funny from far away, but if you look closely, you can see there is actually horizontal lines all the way through. So 
So you could colour that cleverly to make it look like a log cabin uh, with the separate planks of wood on there. I think that would look really lovely. You could even add a few extra black lines in to give it a little bit more of a wood grain effect as well. Um, and then you also have this gorgeous floral one which is packed full of really lovely floral designs. There's tulips, sort of more daisy kind of ones. Really, really lovely. Tiny little flowers as well and a little bit of foliage in there too. And it looks like they have laid it out quite nicely. So if you picked a colour for like this flower and coloured it all the way up, the colours would balance nicely. And also like the tulip, it goes up quite nicely. So I think if you stuck with one colour for each type of flower, you'd get a lovely balance of colouring across that. And then you also have this design as well, which I love this door. I didn't actually use this one, but I love the door on that one. Really does look like an old cottage, something out of like um, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves or something. And you've got the cobblestones going around the edge. And then you've also got the gorgeous hinges on the door as well. And then you have really lovely cluster of flowers that's the same flower as this one coming down the front uh, with also with a bit of foliage down here as well so that would also look fantastic coloured in and the idea behind these panels is you can stamp them directly onto the box and the entire design will come out so where you have the sort of double line piece that entire design will um, fit on the box so you can either stamp like that or you can actually stamp onto the panels and when you stamp onto the panels you will lose the outer stamped line but you will still have the gorgeous inner design so that's the reason why they've added that extra stamped line around there so that if you are stamping it straight onto the box you have like an extra area to colour to make it seem um, like the panel fits the box better I suppose or if you want to you can um, die cut out the sort of interior panel and then stick it onto the box and maybe raise it up with 3D foam or something as well or even um, cut the aperture into the box and add it behind or something as well maybe actually you could try um, stamping and colouring onto vellum because you can definitely use the Tonic Nouveau alcohol pens onto vellum you probably want to stamp on one side of the vellum um, let it dry and then flip it over and colour on the opposite side of the vellum just because even if you use a permanent ink because vellum is slightly more slick sort of surface you might disturb the ink if you're colouring over it um, but yeah definitely you could stamp on one side colour on the other side and then you could cut these apertures in the sides of the house maybe not all sides but you definitely with this floral design I think that would look fantastic you could cut the aperture maybe on two of the sides of the house two opposite sides or something and then add the vellum coloured panel um, behind and I think that would look really lovely with a little um, battery operated tea light inside so that's another kind of idea of how you might want to use that and um, the scalloped panel will work just the same as um, this straight edged panel as well for cutting out the stamp design then going with more of the dies that coordinate so these pieces here for the roof I think the idea is that you would just stamp them onto, the, oh, this way around, you would just stamp them onto the house and they look really lovely like this because I have done this on one of my samples. Um, but I think maybe you could die cut them out and add them on with 3D foam, but you're going to lose a, a bit of the stamp design because the die is smaller than this actual um, image on here. So you could... Um, you could die cut this out and you just wouldn't have that black line around the edge and the pattern would just sort of you know flow off the edge of the die cut so it is possible to die cut these out but they just wouldn't have the black line around the edge so if you were gonna like die cut these pieces out you could then die cut these with the coordinating dies as well if you wanted to or I think it just looks fantastic stamped straight onto the box but it does depend um, what kind of cardstock you're going to use because if you were using a luxury cardstock obviously you couldn't really stamp and colour onto that so in that case you would probably want to um, die cut them out or there's nothing to stop you um, just cutting these out as well if you wanted the full image there's nothing to stop you just trimming around this one in particular is really easy because it's just three straight lines but I mean none of them are too hard to cut around they just have that little notch out of them so you know they're really 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 simple shapes to cut out if you wanted to um, have the full sized piece but added on top of the box as well then we also have um, a different window so we have this gorgeous arched window I love this one I use this on my stamped box um, and 
you've got the gorgeous curtain showing through it as well with the little tie backs on it so you can add some colour to the house without you know making it a wacky coloured house you can just add the wacky colours on the interior with the curtains which is nice you also have a gorgeous front door this actually looks a lot like my front door uh, which I think is why I like it mine's a rectangle though it hasn't got the arch on the top but it has this little arched window um, and I love this kind of design so um, I really love that door and I've actually been colouring it in a similar colour to my front door as well um, but yeah really really lovely and and, and great that you can personalise it um, to whatever kind of front door because like these panels here they could be windows or they could be solid panels my doors have got solid panels but I do know that you can get um, these as windows instead if you want more light coming into your house so um, I think it's lovely that you can sort of personalise the house to somebody then to go around either the front door or the windows to add like some extra architecture to the house you also have um, this little sort of cobblestone piece which actually kind of reminds me of um, a railway bridge I don't know why I think that just reminds me of a railway bridge um, so you, you could even do something and you know add that onto a train themed card as well uh, maybe the 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 bridge, uh, the sorry, the tunnel going into a hill or a mountain or something. That that's the kind of stuff you see, sort of uh, propping up the outside of the tunnel. I think. Anyway, in my brain, that's what I'm imagining. Um, so you've got, you've got that gorgeous piece as well, and it fits really nicely above the door and the window with a tiny little like a millimeter gap kind of between them, um, and it goes on really nicely. Then you also have a little cluster of bricks. So if you want to. Um, just give the suggestion of bricks on you know your house that you're stamping you can just add these little clusters maybe cluster a few together and tessellate them into each other or um, what I was loving doing was stenciling with the gorgeous brick design um, from the die set so there are kind of two ways of adding the bricks onto there and I guess it kind of depends whether you're going for more of a, a subtle look with the ink blending because you haven't got the black outlines or whether you want them to sort of stand out a bit more with the black outline of the stamping um, so you've got different options for adding the bricks to your house you've also got a little raw iron fence as well um, that you can add to the sides of your houses um, I think it fits the die, does it? Now there is even a gap on the die actually, but they I think they've done it this size so that it's easily repeatable and that you can like have the gap in there and, and you know for you to get to the front of the house or something as well. So you can easily move it along and stamp it further if you want to add that little wrought iron um gate or fence around the outside of your house as well. Then you have um, the gorgeous butterflies and I showed you just now how you actually have the dies to coordinate this one you would need to cut um, a template first because you can't actually see all of the butterfly through the metal on that one but you can um, pretty much see it I cut this three times with the die and they I think they look alright every time they're not 100% perfect but um, you know better than uh, sitting there cutting them out yourself so you might even want to use a template for that one as well. I did just eyeball it though and it worked quite nicely. So I love that you get the die to cut that out. And also this die um, for the larger one, it has the deboss line down the middle. So you get the perfect fold in the centre of the butterfly. And then you can just put adhesive on that and then the wings um, stick up, which is really nice on your project. Oops. Um, and then you also have um, a little cross-stitched anchor and a little cross-stitched heart. And then to kind of go along with that theme, um, you also have the cross-stitched home is where the heart is kind of um, embroidery sort of piece. So home and heart are written in cross-stitches um, as a nice little kind of extra um, detail really. You could use this on um, like a scene card as well. If you had other stamps and stuff to sort of build out a scene with like a sofa and that, you could have this in like a little picture frame behind it or... Uh, maybe in like um, a memory book as well you could sort of make a little picture frame to go around that and have that sort of hanging on a, on the page on a memory book or something so that's also a nice kind of different element you also have this little one uh, which I really love but I didn't actually end up using it's basically like a little patch like um, on a patchwork quilt and it's got that gorgeous little cross stitched heart in the center of it and it's like a little centimeter square kind of little patch piece and then finally there are three other stamped sentiments on here. So you've got um, 
you make every day magical with a couple of little sparkles on there believe in the magic and then you've also got best wishes as well and i would think that all of them would fit inside this oval that goes on the gift tag so yep and yep and yep so you could actually use those on that gift tag as well that one won't fit but it might fit in this one yeah so home is where the heart is you could fit in the the main tag rather than having the layer on it but home is where the heart is also fits lovely on the front of the house and i've done that for one of my samples as well so um now we've spent ages looking at all of the stamps and dies i'll be back in one second to show you my samples and then we'll do the quick construction as well so these are the four cards that i've made in my sped up video i've got two like um, kind of abstract new home cards that I'll show you and then I've got two that I have done with those gorgeous butterflies and I was just going to do the one version I think I was planning on the stamped version however I couldn't resist doing another one with the dies as well just to sort of show you a comparison so it's basically exactly the same card I even used the same alcohol pens to colour the die cuts as I did to colour in the images as well and I just wanted to show how um, you could just use those two gorgeous butterflies and one of the sentiments to create a lovely quick card as well. So literally just a little bit of ink bending down the centre of the card, um, a little bit of stamping with that little cross stitch heart, some doodled hearts in there as well, splattering some um, Nouveau glimmer markers, just uh, scribbling some out on your glass cutting mat, watering it down, splattering it with a paintbrush and stamping on the butterflies as well or adding on the die cut butterflies and then I've also just added a few sequins and some Nouveau drops and stuff too. So really really simple kind of cards but nice and effective and because you have the coordinating dies you could have um, you know done a third version of this with the stamped butterflies cut out with the outside edge die as well so you could have then had a three-dimensional version like this but coloured stamped images instead as well so there is actually um, a third option that you could do with that or, or actually a fourth option could be um, cutting the apertures of the butterflies and then using like um, glimmer paste or the sequins stuck into glue or glimmer paste actually um, or some kind of acrylic poured background maybe or a jelly printed background or something you could also put that behind little apertures going up in this kind of pattern as well so lots of different ways of just using um, those two butterflies to create um, a lovely card as well that are quite quick and simple actually so there's those two cards that will be in the sped up video and then I wanted to kind of do something a bit different with the actual um, dies and stamps and I thought um, that lovely right angle triangle would make this cool windmill kind of design so I stamped out four of the roof panels and coloured them like a roof um, and then put them in that sort of windmill design then I also cut out two of the um, brick side pieces like this and I just tore around them so I, I was basically tearing out this sort of main section here just ripping off all of the edges and then using them like this but before I stuck them down my original plan was to just stick two of them like this but then I was like well I want to colour these so why not place them on my card while I colour them and then I'd get some stencil design as well which led me on to stenciling on the box um, with this panel as well later on um, but so the background is kind of like a deconstruct abstract um, you know brick for the the main house then you have this sort of windmill of roof tiles and then you have the front door on here as well and actually just seeing the front door with this piece on is kind of reminding me of um, Monsters Inc with the the doors and the way they take them away I know their doors are square but it kind of reminds me of that sort of thing as well so and then it just says home sweet home and um, I've traced that with the really fine black pen as well so that you can really see the sentiment so I thought that was a kind of um, cool way of using these bits and pieces to make a really different kind of card that I mean yeah there wouldn't I don't think there'd ever be a stamp set where you'd get a triangular piece of roof as a stamp but 
you know, with tonic and their crazy wacky um, sort of architecture for their boxes, you know, you get all sorts of wacky different things and especially when they're going to make stamps to go with the boxes as well. So I think that's kind of a cool idea for a card. So I did that one. And then this one is kind of a little bit more normal. Um, my ink blended a bit in the background, did some stamping with the, the bricks on here as well. And then I used two of the windows and one of the door. So this kind of makes me think of that there would actually be like um, a lovely staircase leading up to this door as well. But I was keeping it abstract. So, you know, you haven't really got the staircase going up to it. But I think it would, you know go with that kind of a house, sort of a bit up high, maybe in the hills or something. Um, I think that would look really lovely. Um, and then I've added on some of that gorgeous ivy and some of these flowers which I've coloured with like corally red kind of tones and I've added a nouveau drop to the centre of them as well and then I've also added those sequins on there too and I've used the home is where the heart is sentiment so another kind of uh, new home sort of a card. And then these two cards, well actually these three cards plus um, the sort of stenciling idea led me on to this box that I did so you can see it matches quite nicely uh, with all the different elements with the same coloured door the little uh, piece going around here the roof and those gorgeous butterflies as well um, I didn't actually use the ivy in the end I was gonna I was going to use the ivy but I used it on the other box so I thought I'd keep this one ivy free but these kind of cards sort of jump-started how I was going to decorate this box because I thought if I do the cards first, hopefully it will steer me in the direction of a colour scheme or something for the box because I think that is the hardest part is trying to figure out what kind of colour scheme you want to do for the box. So that is um, how I sort of got to that colour scheme was making those cards first. And look at actually from the top, look how cool that looks. The sort of different... Um, angles and gable ends of the roof it looks really cool actually from above like that so yeah that's a, another different way I hadn't looked at this box before um but yeah I just did it really really simple and I decided to keep it really flat so none of the panels are die cut and stuck on everything is just stamped on um and if you wanted you know the actual brick design on the box but you also wanted to stamp the doors and stuff you then have to cut out all of these doors so I thought well why don't I mask everything off so I kept them all here to show you I literally just cut masks for all of them once so it was quicker um, and stuck them over the doors this little brick piece and the windows I can keep these in my folder so I've got them for another time and then I just took one of the brick panels that I had cut out and I stuck it down with temporary um, removable tape which is what I use for my die cutting and on the roof I did actually put on um, some ripped up bits of post-it notes so that it covered further because of the triangular sort of portion and then I just took one of Tonic's um, Nouveau blending brushes and some pumice stone distress ink and I just blended on that brick pattern and then you can just remove your masks and you're left with the um, the door and everything ready to colour but you know you can just add that gorgeous brick design onto there without having to add extra um, dimension that would stop you from being able to stamp straight onto the box so it means that it made it really quick and easy basically that you could just stamp the windows onto the box um, and not have to worry about a die cut being on there and then having to cut them out and stick them on top of it although that would look lovely as well but a cheat's way of doing it is to use this as a stencil and obviously you've got um, the floral design as well so you could use the floral design as a stencil too but I was going for a slightly more kind of realistic looking house for this one except for the gigantic butterflies that are landing on it but I love that butterfly so much I just had to put it on the house um, and I was also kind of being wary where I added this one on the roof because of the opening mechanism so I'll show you how it opens it actually opens in four places so you have this piece that goes in there and then you keep going round the box and there's four tabs all with that kind of roof piece and then you can just pull it apart and open it and that's how you get into the inside of the box so I think it's a really cool design and so clever the way that it closes because I, I was really wondering how it was going to close, but then as soon as you have it all together, you're just like, oh, wow, it just like literally just slots down and the whole thing closes. The, the, the most difficult one is the last one because this bit kind of rides up a little bit, so you can just uh, manoeuvre it into place. And then all of them just lock into this little slot mechanism around there, and it looks so lovely. And the pattern is continuous with the roof tiles as well because you've coloured it in all four 
places it, everything is lovely and seamless and continuous and as I was saying earlier the easiest way um, to kind of stamp all these pieces because you need two of the main piece for your box if you use your stamping platform you can line up um, whether, you're using, oops, whether you're using the sides or just windows or um, the door you can line up the three roof pieces and then whatever you're doing on the sides um, and stamp it and then you can take that one out and put the next one in and stamp it again so you're only having to line up the roof pieces um, you know twice because then you can move those stamps and line them up to the other spaces that they're needed on and then stamp that on one and then move it out and put the other one in so um, it does save a little bit of time if you've got a stamping platform for getting the placement kind of nice on the roof as well but my placement isn't perfect and it still looks fine you can see here this roof tile comes right up to the crease on here whereas the other one doesn't so it's really not that noticeable if they're a little bit off so that's also nice and if you have to hand stamp them with an acrylic block then you know it doesn't really matter if they're a teeny bit off so that is the actual box that it makes and then I have got everything ready to do a quick construction for you as well and I've gone really elaborate with this one so I just I couldn't decide on a colour scheme I know I, I nicked the colour scheme off my cards to go for this one but I couldn't decide on another colour scheme so I just went through my scrap box and picked out colours that kind of coordinated so there is this gorgeous luxury card with that flower design on it it's like an etched sort of design in it I've got like a, a taupey coloured piece of card. I've got some of the gorgeous um, Sienna Treasure and the Ginger Pie card from the new um, Harvest Moon colour trend. I also use the Dream Drops from there as well. And then some really dark brown card and a little bit of gold mirror card. And then the grass pieces, um, because I wanted to stick to this kind of neutral toned colour scheme, I didn't want to add bright green grass on there, so I actually just cut it out of the same taupey colour and then just picked one of my um, Nouveau alcohol pens. It was 461 and I just coloured that in to kind of go with the brown sort of tones of the little house. So, what you need to make this house is two of these die cuts, so they just look like this, you need two of them. Then, you're going to need to you have three roof pieces, you're going to need to take all three of those roof pieces and cut each of them four times and then you'll have enough to complete the roof and then for the side pieces you obviously need four side pieces but you can mix and match however you like so I decided to do the opposite two sides are identical pretty much other than the placement of the ivy using the brick piece and then a round window and an arched window and then I've got the front of the house which is using the one that has the sort of archway in it and I've added the die cut door onto it and I've done one arched window near the top and then the other side of the house I've done the main full um, floral patterned panel again with a little arched window in it as well so and I haven't even worried about the arch windows or the circle windows being lined up across the whole box because I think it just adds to that kind of quirky style um, then I've also used a lot of that gorgeous ivy down here as well and I've also used a lot of the flowers as well because I really love the look of that and I just kept the roof area really plain just with that die cut over the top of it um, and then to add your adhesive onto this you literally just need a piece on each of these two glue tabs here and then for the bottom of the box I like to I know you probably heard me say this a lot before I like to add the adhesive on the bottom of my piece um, and then I just find it easier to then stick it onto the glue tabs and then because you have exposed ad adhesive on this I then add um, another one on the inside of the box. It's a little bit trickier to get this down into the inside of the box because of the roof mechanism on the top but I'll show you how I did it. I kind of put the glue on, slide it down one of the straight sides and then flick it over on the inside and then it will fall down nicely and it just gives you a stronger bottom to the box so especially if you were going to give um, a miniature bottle of alcohol or something um, you'd know that it would support the weight of that in there so that's why I like to do that kind of thing. So, firstly, before we start actually assembling this at all, we need to do the folding. So, everything that I'm going to show you first folds away from you. So, this little roof tab folds away, same with that one. These side glue tabs fold away from you. These bottom glue tabs fold away from you. And then... Um, this side piece also folds away from you, this diagonal here and this diagonal here also folds away from you. The hardest part to fold is this central section. So the way I do it is this fold is actually going to 
be a valley fold but to get this to fold nicely we kind of want to fold that as a mountain just so that um, this side of the box will fold nicely and then these two are going to fold away from you again but you can see it's everything is sort of moving in a different direction because of the weirdness of how the box goes together so just pinch that one gently and then pinch the other one gently and then once you've got them going you can then this one that we folded that way to get the side crease we can start folding it backwards and then you will find just with a little bit of maneuvering that you can go like this and push it together and then you can actually press like this to get that really nicely folded so you're folding the house like this and you get that nice fold in the center there and I and I left this one so that I could show you that again. So to get this middle section folded, you're going to fold the side of the house and you can fold all the way up here as well. Then you're going to pinch along these diagonal lines to get them folding. And do the other one. And then to get the box to properly go as it's supposed to, this one now needs to fold backwards. And you can just ease it in to make sure that the two diagonals are going to fold nicely. And then once it all pops backwards, you can really press that in place to get that one to fold backwards nicely. Then we can put the two sides of the box together. So we're just going to take the tape off of here and here. And then we can just get these two to line up perfectly together. And they've even thought about here, actually, that um, angle of the glue tab actually works perfectly with the angle of the roof here as well. So um, they've really thought about even how to cut the glue tab on them, which is nice. So we're lining up right against that... Um, score line there and you'll also see the heart appear as you go down as well the little heart there and then you can line up right down to the bottom so that these score lines are in um, a horizontal line as well and then we can just bring the whole rest of the box around I am I am going to stick this together in midair you probably could fold it flat but then you'd be folding these roof pieces the opposite way again so I think it's easier to sort of um, put this last bit together in midair and so we're literally just going to line up the two score lines down here so that it's going horizontal all the way around the box lining up that cut edge with the folded line up here you see the little heart appearing again up here and then we can just um, put the last bit of the roof together as well and pinch right down on the inside because that bit needs to be stuck together nicely because this is going to push backwards now like those other pieces so we can now carefully manipulate that to go backwards and we can press again like we were doing when we pre-folded the sides and again we want to do that on the other side as well so we want to push that score line backwards and make these two roof panels pop out nicely there we go so now all of the roof is going to be folding perfectly and we can actually fold this together um while we put the main portion of the box on as well so literally how easy it is to put together is it all just comes together nicely and then you just go round clockwise or anti-clockwise and um, fold all of those side pieces down and then you can hear them just slotting into place the last one is always the trickiest just because that piece kind of rises up a little bit so you can just maneuver it around and then flip the last piece round and you get that cool shape on the top of the house and then all we've got to do is put the base of the box on. You can see actually um, the sort of size or shape that it meets at in there. I think you could fit a miniature bottle of alcohol. I think there would be enough room for the top portion of the bottle to go in. So yeah, I think it's a decent sized box. Actually, this is the Nouveau Stamp Cleaning Solution. Okay, it wouldn't... Oh no, maybe it would. Maybe just. Maybe that's slightly too tall. So if you... Look, at, if you have the Nouveau stamp cleaning solution, if, it, if your miniature bottle is 5mm shorter than that, it should fit in. Um, so if you have that for a comparison. So actually, let me just show you. Or let me just measure it. So if your miniature bottle of alcohol is maybe 10.5cm tall, it should fit inside this box. So that's quite a nice um, you know, thing to know. I don't actually know what size little bottles are, but um, yeah, I think that would fit in there. So for the base of the box, 
we can take all of this tape off. I just like to add a lot because I think it makes it nice and sturdy, especially if you are going to put something slightly heavier in the box as well. So we can just stick one side on first and pinch that down so that the glue tab is really well stuck on there. And then because we've already put the top of the box together, it's kind of holding the box in a nice square. So we can then just lay the rest of this over the top and get it to fit nicely on the box. So we've now got the gorgeous bo uh, bottom of the box put on there as well. So the, bo so the box is now technically finished, but we've got that extra adhesive on the interior here. So we wanna make sure we put another square on there so our gift doesn't stick to the inside of the box. So you can literally go round, flip up each four of these and then you can open the box out and you can see how the square of the top that opens is kind of uh, offset at 45 degrees from the base so how I put the other one's base in is I've just used a white base as well because in or the back of this cardstock is white um, and then all I did was cover the back of this with some Nuvo glue and then if you kind of slide it down, so pick one side, so I'm going to go with this side that's towards me, slide it down, I don't know if you can see, um, I've kind of put it in there, I'm sliding it down that straight side, so if you push it down, you can actually use um, your card creaser or bone folder or something, and if you put it right down there, and then you can actually just get this underneath there and like flick it, and then it will fall, start falling down and then you can push it and then that's actually going perfectly in the bottom of the box and then you can press all the way around to make sure it's nice and stuck and then that will just mean you've got a really nice sturdy bottom to your box so that is literally how easy this box is to put together and then if you wanted to add that little hanging tab on the top of the box you can also um, do that as well you would literally just cut two of them stick them together around the whole of the piece and then spread one either side of one of these roof bits of the house and then it would hang from there so I think this is so lovely that kind of looks very autumny as well actually probably because of the the harvest moon color trend that I've used on there but um I think these would make really cute little decorations as well. You could even do um, a whole like Christmas village if you wanted to as well. Make up some of your own um, signs and things to put on them. Or again, like do an advent calendar. I think it would look really cool. And, and here's what I was saying earlier about um, adding the decorative paper on the other side um, so that the little shutters could actually shut as well and, and fold over the window. I think that's really sweet to do that. So... Um, I hope you enjoyed this up close video looking at Tonic Showcase number 15 um, which is the Enchanted Cottage and I hope you enjoyed the kind of wacky abstract card ideas that I showed you as well as um, pretty cards just using those gorgeous butterflies and also um, you know a sort of more stamped and stenciled looking house compared to a completely die cut house as well um, and seeing the assembly of it. I hope you enjoyed all of that and hope it was helpful to you as well. Um, so if you're interested in getting hold of this month's showcase there will be affiliate links in the description below the video and also on my blog as well and I really do appreciate you using them it really makes a massive difference to me. Um, and thank you so much for watching and I will see you again in the next video. Bye!